What is going on everybody? Welcome back to this episode of Home Built Workshop. Today we're going to restore an old egg beater drill. Check it out. So I've been getting more interested in old hand tools lately. Right now my limited experience with them is only in hand planes so I thought I'd branch out a little bit into some of the old drills. So I picked up this little egg beater drill on eBay. My initial inspection looked pretty good. Everything looked like it was there. All the parts and mechanisms operated smoothly, but then I noticed a small problem with it. The chuck appeared to be missing the springs that hold the little three jaws into place. The eBay listing didn't say anything about that. I'm not too worried about it. I think we can make or find some other springs that'll work. If you're selling things on eBay, please try to include information like this. It could be really important to a buyer. Now I have never taken one of these apart before, so I'm not quite sure what all may be involved, but I do see some screws on there, so I'm going to start by removing those screws and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, and it comes loose. Cool. Now thankfully this thing is not in that bad of shape. I probably could just get some new springs for the chuck and use it as is, but I kind of just want the experience of going through disassembling and kind of restoring this thing. This handle's just a little bit loose. Looks like it just pulls off. Oh, that's tiny. Don't lose that. Now these little parts are not really all that rusty. There's a little bit of rust on a couple of them, but overall I think they're just dirty. But just to remove what little bit of rust is there, I'm just gonna soak them in some white vinegar. This seems to be a very popular method in removing rust and doing restorations on old tools like this. So now I've got just all the metal pieces in this little container. Just gonna pour some vinegar over the top. And while these pieces are soaking in the vinegar, I'm gonna work on sanding down these wooden parts. Okay, now I know why this container was getting thrown out. I hear I thought it was a perfect score for something like this, but it's leaking vinegar all at the bottom, all over. I better go quick find another container. I'm going to start off with this little side handle that threads on. Now I can just take a bolt and thread that right in there and I'll be able to chuck that into my drill press so that I can sand it, but I got to remove that head first. Now that could very simply be done with a hacksaw, but for me, I think a faster method would be to just grind it off on the belt grinder. Cool. I might see if I can get this ferrule off of there. There's probably some sort of method to get this off, but I'm gonna really carefully hold this with a pair of pliers. I don't want to bend it or anything. Ha! Ah. So now that I've got these handles, they're sanded down, they're nice and smooth, but that dye or stain or whatever that is, is down in the grain of that wood. I don't want to sand it down all the way to get rid of that because I'm afraid it's going to start changing the shape. So I've cut a piece of wood that I can put the bolts in. This is just going to be like a little stand for me to hold these parts on. So what I'm going to do is use some red dye and recoat these in the red. I'm afraid if I just put some oil on this right now, it's gonna look really pink. So I'm gonna put some red dye on here, and while that's drying, I can work on cleaning up those metal pieces. There's a slight chance that this is a non-traditional way of restoring something like this, but it's what I'm going with. I like it. Now back at the vinegar bath, I'm using a small wire brush to remove any loose material.
Then I'll clean up the remainder of the parts on a wire wheel. Now I'll tape off the gears on the main drive gear. And I'll apply a couple of new coats of red paint. In case you guys didn't know, red's my favorite color. With the paint drying on that main gear, I'm gonna go back to these handles, apply a couple of coats of boiled linseed oil. These are gonna be the brightest handles you've ever seen. Alrighty, now let's start on a little bit of assembly and get this guy back together and in working order. I'm going to start out with these two main frame pieces. I'm going to pop those back together by first installing the little washer. And then that pops right in there, followed by this teeny little set screw. So now the next piece to install would be the chuck, but I can't install the chuck just yet because these three little jaws will just flop around in there because they're missing the springs. After doing a bit of searching around online, it sounds like that there is a spring that you can get in certain mechanical pencils that fits really well, or people have had luck making their own springs, and that's what I'm gonna try with this eeny weeny tiny piece of guitar string. I need to make a spring that fits inside this little hole. I found a drill bit that fits in here perfectly, and then I went one size below. I wanna make it a little bit smaller to account for spring back. Now I'm gonna lightly chuck that drill bit into my drill backwards. Now I'm gonna use a guitar string, and this particular string is a .017. With the drill on low speed, I'm just gonna wind the guitar string and make my own spring. Pretty cool, huh? I had to repeat this process a few times until I had three good springs. The first couple were practice. Now we'll just take our springy contraption, drop it down in there, and hope that everything stays together. Let's see, do they come out and touch? Yes, they do. We're good. And just a couple of notes on the springs while I'm reinstalling the rest of the pieces. You may need to experiment a little bit with the size of the drill bit that you wind the wire around. Depending on the amount of spring back you get, you may need a smaller or larger drill bit to fit the application you need. I'm just gonna use a little bit of light machine oil, basically sewing machine oil, put a couple drops in some of the critical areas to keep everything running smooth. It feels nice and smooth. Let's slap a bit in here and see if we can drill a hole. Yay! It's drilling a hole! Cool. I think we can call that a success. So thank you so much for tuning into this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, maybe found it interesting. If you did, please share the video. Sharing is a great way to help promote the channel. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Uh -oh.